طب انا بس عايز اعرف هو هنا سيد هاتي الساعة عشرة اللي هو يعني طيب آه. انا برضو هنا هو يعني هي مفروض مثلا جيف كنترول انا مش لاقي هنا جيف كنترول لما بظهر الباوربوينت ما بيطلعليش الجيف كنترول او ستوب برزنتيشن اه طيب ماشي خلاص اهو من ده عبد الله دكتور شكرا لا ماشي هكلم حضرتك بس هيك معايا لو محتاج حاجه اوكي ماشي باي يا جماعه حد ممكن يرد عليا حد معايا يا سيك معايا سامعيني يا جماعه حد بس حد يكلمني ممكن او يرد عليا طيب يا جماعه احنا النهارده هناخد ال يعني ان شاء الله الفرينك نيرف ان الصورة طبعا يعني هو اه الفرينك نيرف it is not a cranial nerve it is a spinal nerve اه ال starting from the cervical plexus root value C 3 4 and 5 ال right and left phrenic nerve have a different course in the chest and have a uh, different uh, relation, uh, especially its uh, uh, medial, uh, medial relation. Uh, 
the uh, phrenic nerve on the right side descend on what we call the venous side of the mediastinum, while the left one descend what we call on the arterial uh, side of the uh, mediastinum. So the right phrenic nerve descend on the right side of the superior vena cava and the heart, including the right atrium, which is the venous side, and the left phrenic nerve descend on the left side of the heart, and both of them terminating in the diaphragm. The nerve supply the uh, diaphragm, uh, giving uh, motor and sensory fibers uh, from its uh, under surface, and in addition, it also gives uh, sensory supply to the pleura and pericardia. Uh, we have some general <coughs> uh, consideration for the uh, phrenic uh, nerve. It has two cores uh, in the neck and in the thorax. We are going now to study what's uh, the, uh, the part inside the thorax. It is a mixed nerve. Uh, you know the spinal nerve may be have a pure motor fibers or a pure sensory or mixed. It is a mixed. Have a motor for the diaphragm and sensory for the three serous membrane. Entering the thorax through the thoracic uh, inlet in front of the subclavian and beginning and behind the brachiocephalic vein. That's what we can say it enters between the venous side or the venous layer and the arterial layer of the uh, mediastine. Uh, in the thorax, the phrenic nerve crossing uh, the internal thoracic artery from lateral to median. Uh, to descend first in the superior, then in the middle mediastine. So it has a two course or two parts in the source. First in the superior mediastine and the second in the middle or what's called the posterior part of the posterior mediastine. Each phrenic nerve passes in front of the root of the lung and covered laterally by the mediastinal pleura, separated from it by the visceral one. The right phrenic nerve shorter than the left one. Why? If we go back to this image, we can uh, see that the right copula of the uh, diaphragm is higher than the left one because of the level, and also the course of the right phrenic nerve is more vertical as the left one have to go along the convexity of the heart. That's to say the right phrenic nerve is shorter than the left one because the cobula of the diaphragm, and in addition, it is a vertical pathway, while the left one has to go on along the convexity of the heart. This is what we call the cervical plexus, which give origin to the phrenic nerve by the root value C3, C4, and, and C5. Uh, the course of the phrenic nerve. It descends on the right side of the mediastinum, which we call it the venous side, while the left one descends on the left side of the mediastinum, which we call it the uh, venous, uh, venous side. Okay. The two phrenic nerves differ in their medial relation. Laterally, they both are related to the visceral surface of the uh, lung, while medially they are different. The right phrenic nerve descend vertically along the venous side of the mediastinum, okay, and lie on the right aspect of these structures from above downward. The right brachiocephalic vein, the superior vena cava, the pericardium on the right atrium and the inferior vena cava. When we see the relation of the right phrenic nerve, this is the venous side of the heart. It descends between the venous layer and the arterial layer of the mediastinum, and then descend along the brachiocephalic vein and along the right atrium of the heart, and then through the inferior uh, vena cava opening, it enters the diaphragm to supply it from its under surface. Okay. Regarding the left phrenic nerve, descend along the arterial side of the mediastine, lie on the left aspect of the arterial channels, first left common carotid, left subclavian, and then behind left brachiocephalic vein between the venous and the arterial layer, crossing the left vagus. If you see, this is the phrenic nerve on the left side, it runs between the venous and arterial layer, between the left, the subclavian vein and subclavian artery, 
En zeker als in de aardse als al op de, in front als op een manier ook en de veen en zijn de zin along de zee left side of the heart, which is called the zee arterial side. Uh, it leaves the source by piercing the left copula of the diaphragm. If we see the uh, right phrenic nerve, it leaves the source by passing through the vena cave. And this is an important difference between the right one and the left. The right one leaves the source through the vena cave opening, while the left one piercing the left copula of the uh, diaphragm. Okay. What are the other branches? As you see, it is a mixed nerve. It has a motor part and a sensory part. The phrenic nerve is the only motor fiber of the muscle of the diaphragm, arise in the neck because the diaphragm develops in the neck and then pulling the diaphragm and then the when the diaphragm migrating to its level between the source and abdomen, it pulling the phrenic nerve with it and supplying the diaphragm from its under surface. Why? Because the uh, embryo, during the folding of the embryo, the cranial or the upper part surface of the diaphragm becomes directed caudally. The diaphragm is folded on itself, so the upper part will be caudally. That's why the phrenic nerve is supplied from its under surface. Also, it gives the sensory part, the pericardium of the heart, the mediastinum and the the phragmatic pleura and the peritoneum lining the abdominal surface of the diaphragm from below. Okay. Important point about the phrenic nerve we have to consider we have an accessory phrenic nerve. Why we have to consider this part? Because the phrenic nerve arises from C3, 4, and 5. Sometimes when the phrenic nerve is injured during surgery, this will not lead to complete paralysis of the diaphragm. Why? Because this accessory phrenic nerve, which arises from C5, is uh, have a different uh, point of joining the C3 and C4. In most cases, this nerve join the main part of the phrenic nerve at the level of the first trap. Okay, but sometimes it will be joined a little down. So in this case, if you injure the C3 and C4. We left the C4 part, which is accessory phrenic nerve, is uh, uh, intact uh, and must be cut it also to have a complete paralysis of the diaphragm. How we can get the paralysis of the diaphragm? This is the right and this is the left phrenic nerve. If this left phrenic nerve is injured, this part of the diaphragm will not act or will not contract. During deep respiration, what's happened? The intercostal muscle elevating the reps and the diaphragm is contracted and going down, pulling the central tendon towards the abdomen. When we have a paralysis of the left phrenic nerve, what's happened? When we have deep inspiration, the diaphragm on the right side will contract and going downward, pressing on the abdomen increasing the interabdominal pressure which uh, in turn will pushing the or will push the uh, left copula of the diaphragm upward making what we call a paradoxical movement of the diaphragm paradoxical means in reverse uh, movement in reverse when the diaphragm on the healthy side contracted downward the disease of the paralyzed side will be contracted upward in order to understand what's happened, we can see this plain X-ray. This plain X-ray of the patient having a paralysis of the left copula of the diaphragm. During deep inspiration, the two copula will contract and going downward. But in this case, if left copula uh, paralysis, the copula is pushed upward by the increased interabdominal pressure. Again, when the diaphragm is uh, contracted, will re, uh, it will push the abdomen and increasing the interabdominal pressure. If one or if the left or the right copula is paralyzed, the increased interabdominal pressure by the healthy uh, copula of the diaphragm will in turn elevating the left copula. And this can be clearly seen in the X-ray as an elevated disease or paralyzed copula of the diaphragm. This is the same case of uh, left phrenic nerve uh, uh, paralysis. Okay. The other topic in today's uh, lecture is uh, azygous vein. The azygous vein, uh, we have 
to mention the uh, intercostal nerves of uh, the coastal veins and arteries of the uh, thoracic wall. We have anterior and posterior part. The azygous vein is concerned about uh, the posterior uh, intercostal uh, veins. The beginning of the zygous vein, what's important of the zygous vein? It is uh, an accessory channel or a communication between the inferior vena cava below the heart and superior vena cava above the heart. Usually, it arises uh, between L1 and L2 vertebra for, uh, from the posterior part of the inferior vena cava to the posterior part of the superior vena cava. We have a different overall general consideration. This azygous vein in the vein which connects the back of the inferior vena cava in the abdomen with the back of the superior vena cava in the soil. So it acting as a collateral vein or a collateral circulation. If we have obstruction of one of them, the vein have a pathway to the another one. It drains most of the thoracic wall, okay, whether directly from the right side or indirectly via the superior and the inferior hemiazygous vein. This hemiazygous vein representing the mirror uh, part of the azygous vein on the left side. Okay, so it is the main route through which collateral venous circulation pass in case of obstruction of superior or inferior vena cava. This is a, a superior uh, vena cava, okay, and this is an inferior vena cava, and this is the azygous vein on running on the posterior part of the chest wall. When the inferior vena cava is uh, obstructed, the uh, veins or uh, the venous uh, supply have its way so the azygous vein to the superior vena cava, and vice versa. Also, if the superior vena cava is obstructed, the pathway of the vein go to the azygous vein and then through the inferior vena cava come back again to the uh, to the heart. Uh, the azygous vein commonly has a variable origin, usually or the most common from the back of the inferior vena cava at the level of L2. So another option, if uh, uh, it has uh, begin as a continuation of the right subcostal vein between the diaphragm and the body of this of thoracic uh, uh, 12. Okay, or sometimes union of right ascending and right subcostal. If we go back. Uh, uh, to the uh, origin of this uh, uh, zygous vein, it either arises from the back of the inferior vena cava, and uh, this is the uh, subcostal vein, and this is the ascending lumbar vein. It has three options either from the back of the inferior vena cava, and the ascending lumbar and subcostal vein drain into it, or it arises as a continuation of the subcostal vein or union of the subcostal vein and the ascending lumbar veins. Okay, the most common is to arise from the back of the inferior vena cava. The occasional arise a continuation of subcostal vein or a union of ascending lumbar and the subcostal vein. Okay, uh, the course and termination in the thorax and in the superior mediastine. It ascends in the first, in the superior, in the posterior mediastinum, till the level of uh, thoracic four and five. What's happened in this level? It acts to join the back of the superior vena cava. This is the brachycephalic vein, the right brachycephalic, and this is the left brachycephalic vein. Okay, and this is the superior vena cava. We have here the inferior vena cava, and this is the azygous vein, and this is the arch of the azygous vein joining the back of the superior vena cava. This is the main course in the uh, source. The arch of the zygous vein end in the back of the superior vena cava just before this vein piercing the uh, pericardium. Yani before the superior vena cava piercing the pericardium to enter the heart, the zygous vein join it at the level of the second right coastal, uh, coastal cartilage. Okay. What's the clinical importance of this azygous vein is have an important role in the obstruction of the superior vena cava. This is a very important point. If the obstruction or is above the entrance of the azygous vein or below the entrance of the azygous vein into the superior vena cava. The obstruction of the superior vena cava, it, if it is above the entrance, the venous drainage of the upper half of the body diverted to reach the heart via the azygous vein. 
okay? While if the obstruction is below the entrance, the venous blood from the regions drained by the smear vena cava is returned to the heart via anastomotic channels between superior vena cava and inferior vena cava, other anastomotic channels between them. So this is a very important, where is the level of uh, obstruction. The azygous vein acts if the level of obstruction is above the entrance of this azygous vein. To understand, this is the level of the entrance of the azygous vein. If the uh, obstruction is above the level of entrance, the drainage will be continuity between the azygous vein uh, will continue between the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava. But if the obstruction is here below, it also obstructs the entrance of the zygous vein. So the other collaterals will act as a communication between the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava. So the level of obstruction is very important in relation to the entrance of the zygous vein. Okay. Uh, this is the termination of the zygous vein on this right. Uh, lung and this is the sinus surface, the hilum of the right lung and the esophagus, it uh, forming an arch crossing uh, above the hilum to end on the back of the superior vena cava. It arch above the root of the right lung, joining the superior vena cava at the level of the sternal angle of Lewis, Rose junction second costal cartilage, or the level between T4 and T5. This event uh, we have many events happened at the uh, junction between T4 and T5 and at the uh, external, uh, external angle. Okay. Uh, relation of the zygous vein in the posterior mediastinum. It has a very important relation to ascent related to the body of the lower eight thoracic vertebra. If you see, we have this is the side of the azygous vein. This is the side body of the uh, lower eight thoracic vertebrae related uh, to the medial side of the azygous uh, vein. And then we have this is the esophagus, uh, the phrenic nerve, and then it is at the level of T uh, between T4 and T5. It arching forward from the arch of the azygous vein to end in the superior uh, vena cava. Okay, so the relation of the zygous vein in the posterior mediastinum uh, related to the body of the lower eight thoracic vertebrae, first behind the right border of the esophagus, then behind the root of the right lung. It has the following uh, relations, very important, anterior uh, related to the uh, esophagus, this is anterior relation, uh, posterior lower eight thoracic vertebrae, on the right side, uh, right pleura and lung, which is called laterally, and the left side of medially, the thoracic duct and the descending outward. The arch of the azygous vein is very simple. Uh, below it arching above the root of the right lung. On the right side, usually and always, the right pleura and lung. On the left side, esophagus, trachea, and the right vagus nerve. This is the vagus nerve and the esophagus and the trachea arching of the azygous vein. So this is a very clear uh, the azygous vein and the arch and its arch usually laterally or on the right side related to the right lung and the pleura. Medially, uh, the azygous vein itself uh, related to the thoracic body and the vertebrae, esophagus, and when arching, uh, it related to the high lung, the left lung, and uh, the uh, vagus. Uh, this is the uh, vagus nerve. Okay. What are the tributaries? of the uh, azygous, uh, azygous vein. Uh, we have a very nice uh, diagram here. We can in divide the intercostal vein into uh, the upper four group and then the middle and the uh, lower four group. Uh, the first posterior intercostal vein, each one ending into its related brachiocephalic vein. Okay. What about the uh, intercostal, posterior intercostal vein from second, third, and fourth? They form uh, together the uh, right superior intercostal vein, which joins the azygous. Then from 5 to 12, joining the azygous vein uh, itself. And then uh, the last one is the ascending lumbar vein and the uh, subcostal vein. Okay. On the left side, it have a two main tributaries. The superior and inferior hemiazygous uh, vein. So we can have a map on the, on the posterior wall, uh, posterior chest wall, 
This map of the posterior intercostal vein, the first one on each side, ending in its related brachycephalic vein. The from the second, third, and fourth, forming the superior intercostal vein, the left one and the right one. The left one also joining the brachycephalic vein or the left brachycephalic vein on the left side, while the right side joining the azygous vein. From 5 to 12, on the right side, ending directly into the azygous vein, while on the left side, forming the superior hemi-azygous vein, and, on a, and from 8 to 12, forming the inferior hemi-azygous vein to ending in the uh, azygous vein itself. So, what are the tributaries of this azygous vein? A common trunk formed by a union of the right ascending lumbar and the right subcostal. Uh, this union uh, may also be uh, representing the uh, beginning of the azygous vein. Okay, uh, the right posterior intercostal vein from the 11th to the 5th below the upcode, okay, on the right side. The right superior intercostal vein taking the union of the 4th, 3rd, and 2nd posterior intercostal vein. And to have to remember the first one ending directly in the right brachiocephalic uh, vein. Inferior hemiazygous and superior hemiazygous. Uh, some tributaries of small veins from the solar, from the lung, esophageal veins, pericardial, and mediastinal veins. This group of uh, small veins, we can call it all the visceral, uh, small visceral veins uh, into uh, ending directly into the azygous vein. This is the main veins having a, a, a course and a name. Uh, trunk mineral, uh, from the right ascending lumbar and the right subcostal, posterior intercostal veins, uh, superior intercostal vein, uh, inferior hemiazygous, uh, and superior hemiazygous. Let us go again for the uh, tributaries of the uh, azygous, uh, tributaries of the azygous vein again. We have uh, the uh, superior intercostal vein, second, third, and fourth on the right side. We have veins posterior costal from the fifth to the eleventh, ascending lumbar and the subcostal vein. And on the left side, we have the superior and inferior uh, hemiazygous vein. Okay. Uh, what about the inferior and uh, superior hemiazygous vein? Uh, the origin it has a variable origin like the azygous vein. The hemiazygous vein of the inferior hemiazygous vein on the left side representing the lower part of the azygous vein on the right side. Uh, the uh, inferior hemiazygous vein, to, uh, to remember the lower part of the azygous, the azygous either arise from the inferior vena cava, from the ascending lumbar, or subcostal, or joining of ascending lumbar and subcostal. The inferior hemiazygous vein has the same. It most commonly from the back of the left renal vein, which is corresponding to the back of the IVC, inferior vena cava, in case of the azygous vein. Okay, but less commonly, like the azygous, union of subcostal and ascending lumbar, but on the left side, or a continuation of the of the left costal vein. So. This is a very uh, uh, nice uh, similarity between the azygous vein and the inferior hemiazygous. On the, the azygous vein arise from the back of the inferior vena cava, while on the left side, the inferior hemiazygous arise from the back of the uh, left renal vein. This is the most uh, common. Okay. What is the exception? Either each one of them on its side, continuity of the subcostal vein, or union of ascending lumbar with the uh, subcostal vein, either on the left side to form the inferior hemiazygous or on the right side to form the azygous vein. Tributaries of the inferior hemiazygous vein corresponding to the lower part of the azygous on the right side, taking the posterior intercostal vein till the ninth one and then crossing behind the esophagus to join the azygous vein. The superior hemiazygous takes the posterior intercostal vein as a tributary. Uh, from uh, the fifth, this is the beginning, from the fifth posterior intercostal and going down, crossing to the left side, and on its way, it takes the six, seven, and eight uh, interposterior intercostal vein to form the superior uh, hemiazygous vein. 
this is the severe hemozygous vein origin begin at the posterior end of the fifth left intercostal space as a continuation of the fifth left posterior intercostal. Descent on the left side of the body of the middle four thoracic vertebrae and at the level of T8 bends on the right side crossing the midline in front of the body and behind the descending aorta thoracic duct and esophagus behind all the visceral structures aorta thoracic duct and esophagus to ending in the azygous vein it uh, received tributaries from fifth to the eighth vein this is a nice distribution of uh, the posterior intercostal vein on the uh, uh, posterior part of the chest uh, this is the first intercostal vein the first one on the right side in the brachycephalic and on the left side in the corresponding brachycephalic. Okay, the upper two from the left superior intercostal and the, on the right side from the right superior intercostal for uh, ending in the azygous vein. The azygous vein is the beginning uh, uh, on the uh, back of the inferior vena cava corresponding the beginning of the inferior hemozygous from the back of the left renal vein. The exception, we have the subcostal vein continuity on the right side forming the azygos, on the left side forming the inferior hemozygos, or union of the ascending glomerul with the subcostal vein to form the azygos vein on the right side or forming the hemiazygos on the uh, left side. Okay, the tributaries of the inferior hemiazygos and the superior hemiazygos are considered from the fifth. 6, 7, 8 to have the inferior hemozygous vein and the inferior hemozygous the lower for posterior uh, intercostal veins. Okay, so to uh, uh, remind or uh, to have a gentle reminder what is the clinical importance of uh, uh, this uh, azygous and hemozygous uh, system. If we have obstruction of the severe vena cava, okay, how can the uh, blood supply of the of the venous return from the upper part of the body will go back again to the heart if the superior vena cava is completely obstructed? Uh, this blood supply of this venous return will going uh, down so the right and the left brachycephalic vein found the superior vena cava is completely obstructed. If the obstruction doesn't include the azygous vein, the returning vein will go to the superior to the superior vena cava and then to the azygous uh, vein and the, the coming down and joining the back of the inferior vena cava and the coming through the inferior vena cava to return to the heart. But if the obstruction is including also the opening of the uh, azygous uh, vein, the returned uh, venous drainage will go through the collateral on the posterior chest wall to the left renal and uh, inferior uh, vena cava. And this is a very important uh, however the site of superior vena cava obstruction in relation to the azygous, uh, azygous vein. Okay. Uh, this is our lecture today about uh, the azygous and uh, hemiazygous vein. Uh, I will uh, have a gentle uh, reminder about uh, both of them, the phrenic nerve, uh, rapidly in the uh, five minutes. You have to know first the phrenic nerve, it is not a cranial nerve, it is a spinal nerve. It arising from the cervical plexus, C3, 4 and 5. C5 itself may be forming what we call accessory uh, phrenic uh, nerve. In order to have a complete paralysis, each phrenic nerve is the main uh, rule or the mixed nerve uh, is the motor to the diaphragma and the sensor to the pleura, the uh, cardium and the uh, peritoneal part uh, covering the under surface of the diaphragm. Uh, in order to have a complete paralysis of the diaphragm, we have to cut the whole phrenic nerve or its roots. Sometimes we have an accessory phrenic nerve arising from C5. Uh, and coming down. Usually this accessory phrenic nerve joining the main one at the neck and we have uh, a main trunk of the phrenic nerve inside the thorax. But sometimes this accessory phrenic nerve continue to run down in the thorax as an accessory phrenic nerve. So surgically if you cut down 
the mean phrenic nerve, you may not have a complete paralysis of the phrenic. Why? Because we have an accessory uh, phrenic nerve arise from uh, C5. Okay, this is one of the important uh, uh, clinical uh, problem. Okay, what is the uh, phrenic? Uh, what is the phrenic uh, nerve uh, paralysis? Uh, the phrenic nerve paralysis. Uh, this is uh, the the diagram very important, which is called the paradoxical movement of the diaphragm, usually during inspiration. <coughs> both copula of the diaphragm coming to uh, down inside the abdomen, increase interabdominal pressure, okay, during inspiration. Why in the paralysis of the left copula, the healthy one will compress and increasing the interabdominal pressure. The interabdominal pressure pushing the lax paralyzed copula upward. And this can be seen clearly in the plain X-ray of the just. This is the heart, this is the outline of the copula of the diaphragm. When we have a deep inspiration, the copula of the diaphragm, the paralyzed one, instead of being downward, it will be pushed by the increased interabdominal pressure to come upward. This is called a paradoxical movement. Paradoxical means a reverse movement. Okay, this is the two main uh, clinically important uh, points. Uh, the azygous vein, we can say it is a communication between the lower venous drainage and upper venous drainage of the abdomen. The uh, lower venous drainage represented by the superior vena cava and the lower venous, the upper venous drainage represented by the superior vena cava and the lower body venous drainage represented by the inferior, uh, inferior vena cava. This is a zygous and the hemiazygous system is the communication between the upper part and lower part of this venous drainage. If we have obstruction in the superior vena cava, the blood will divert it through this network of veins to the inferior vena cava. Either through the azygous vein mainly if the obstruction doesn't include its entrance or through the posterior intercostal veins if the obstruction including its entrance. OK, uh, this map is a, a very clear uh, one. Uh, this map of uh, uh, veins. Uh, we have this azygous uh, uh, vein on the left side. Uh, the beginning, uh, we can compare the beginning of the azygous vein with the uh, hemi of the uh, uh, inferior hemi azygous vein on the left side. Uh, the main uh, uh, beginning the azygos from the back of the inferior vena cava, how is the inferior azygos from the back of the left renal vein? What is the exception? Exception, continuity of the subcostal vein or joining of subcostal vein with the ascending clump. Okay. Uh, the azygos vein joining the back of the superior vena cava and receiving many uh, tributaries. These tributaries uh, from the uh, left uh, side in superior hemazygos and from uh, uh, superior and inferior hemozygous, and from the right side we have the superior, uh, right superior intercostal vein, the posterior intercostal vein from the fifth to the twelfth uh, one, and uh, the ascending lumbar and subcostal vein. The superior hemozygous and the inferior hemozygous, this includes the middle four posterior intercostal, and this is the lower four posterior intercostal uh, veins. Okay. Uh, I hope we, uh, you can get uh, you, you are interested by this uh, uh, fine lecture and uh, uh, kindly stress on the clinical point of the phrenic nerve and the clinical point of the azygos and the hemi azygos vein. Okay, uh, thank you and uh, uh, sorry for the late start due to uh, technical error and I hope I can uh, summarize for you the swenic nerve and uh, as I go swing. Uh, thank you. Uh, and I'm waiting for you in the second lecture, inshallah. Salam.